Greetings. Welcome to Two Days Denarius. I'm Ron Thomas. On this video, I'm kind of hiding behind a stack of study Bibles. To tell you the truth, I have benefited greatly uh, from study Bibles ever since my teenage years. They have helped me grow spiritually, devotionally, and I think they are of great worth and value. The beauty of study Bibles is that uh, they come in many different flavors and colors. They usually all have a different purpose as the one we're going to look at today has. But I don't want to hide behind these study Bibles. Many reviews have been done on the ones that I'm sitting behind, but not many reviews have been done about on the brand new one that we're going to take a look at in this episode. It is Crossways English Standard Version Church History Study Bible that will be the topic of our video today. I'm Ron Thomas, and this is Two Days Denarius. Let's get started. Well, it's kind of nice to break apart from videos on issues. Uh, I love learning, teaching, educational growth videos, which are most of what I do. Uh, but you know what? Resources that help us grow spiritually uh, are vital to be part of a teaching channel like this. And as I said in the introduction, I have benefited for many years from using study Bibles. And in recent times, I've mainly used the Christian Standard Study Bible, which was put out by Lifeway around 19 or 2019, somewhere in that area, uh, maybe a little earlier than that. But that particular study Bible is one of the best out there. And for lay people, uh, you can learn just about anything you want and hope to learn from that particular study Bible. Okay. In addition to that, if you want to take a look back, uh, about a year ago I created three videos uh, on study Bibles uh, that I have also benefited from, one of which was the Christian Standard Bible. Uh, that, unfortunately, for a great study Bible, really has not had enough videos on it. And I did a pretty extensive look at that particular Bible, uh, but no explanation there. And the other two have had a good number of views on them. Actually, the Jeremiah Study Bible is number one, and it's had over 800 views. And the Reformation Study Bible, well over 700 views. Uh, that one, those two have actually done very well. I don't know, I have no predictions on how the Church History Study Bible will do. But I want you to know from the time I was a teenager, uh, I had study Bibles around the 1970s. They were still really starting to crop out then. Although, uh, the study Bible that kind of started it all was the Schofield Reference Bible, which I can't remember the year it came out. But the Schofield, if, if I came out of fundamental Baptist background, not, I'm not now, but back then when I was a kid, if you had a Schofield reference Bible, you know, by the way, you, you had to have the King James Version, and you also, actually that's all that came out in back then, and also um, you had to have the original. You, you didn't get the second edition. You weren't the real thing unless you had the original Schofield study Bible. It's kind of a historical one. Like I said, it's the one that studied, uh, got it all started. And uh, for the fundamental Baptist, it was very dispensational. It was really one of the things, one of the impetus, the impetus for getting dispensationalism uh, accepted in the church and certainly the pre-millennial rapture uh, prophecy like that. High focus on those things. I had one of those once and it was a gift from my mom. I, either misplaced it, I wish I hadn't lost it. Uh, that, that was a treasure and one that I really needed to keep a better eye on. But nevertheless, uh, study Bibles in recent years um, have been coming out in all shapes and flavors. I, they're coming out from in individual pastors. Uh, they're just coming out of everybody who wants to get their so-called theology or their name out there or their legacy set. And, my question is, do we need them? I do think we need some of them. Do I think we need all of them? Uh, probably not. But in this particular video, uh, we don't wanna, I don't want to really discuss the necessity or the not so much the non-necessity of study Bibles or which particular ones. We're just going to take our time and look at this one particular study Bible today, which I do think has much value. And I will talk about things that I see are positive, and I will talk about some things uh, that I kind of see on the negative side, too. I'll give you the full scoop. 
And I just want to say, let's go ahead and move over to the table and get a look at the Church History Study Bible. Okay, well now we are in the Church History Study Bible. Let us go ahead and begin our journey. Uh, you know, what, one of the things important, uh, you can see the crossway uh, down here at the bottom has really been a very faithful evangelical uh, publishing house for many years and, and it remains as such. So I, the English Standard Version has been a steady, solid uh, Bible version. Uh, since the early 2000s and you know what I have to say it matches up with this particular study Bible table of contents uh, basic now over here on the left this gives you the rights and it tells you about the years and things across way you get a study Bible and you get a Bible translation it's often wise to take a look at the beginning because it tells you a little bit what you can do what you can't do uh, it tells you the years it was printed now if you were a student in college or seminary, you'd be required to look at this. Now, on here, of course, you see the Old Testament and the New, but then you also have a few creeds. Uh, nothing like the Reformation Study Bible. The Reformation Study Bible has a whole bunch of creeds and confessions in it. This one only has three, and it's the earliest three. It's the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, Creed and the Chalcedonian Creed. Uh, turning the page, <clears throat> as we turn the page, you can see a couple of other things that we'll run into later, articles and resources, and then the map supplement. Now, I want to say about something about this, and I don't want to spend much time on these later, but these, basically, these articles and these maps are repeats of what's in the Reformation Study Bible. So, there is much influence of the Reformation Study Bible upon this particular study Bible itself. Introduction. Uh, this basically tells the purpose of what the Bible was created for. It will also tell you who the Bible was created for. But there's a couple of things I do want to note here. And one of them is uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones quote right here. He says, we begin to study the history of the church throughout the ages and we remember what we read years ago, something in the lives of some of the saints. And we begin to understand that some of the greatest saints that have ever adorned the life of the church have experienced trials and troubles and tribulations which cause, causes, cause our little problems to pale in significance. And many of these church fathers or whoever it might be that you're reading about, many of them suffered greatly. Like one of them was Athanasius. And Athanasius was an early church father who uh, was exiled five times uh, for standing for the truth. Uh, but down here in this other section, it talks about who is this study Bible for. And it basically says it's intended to serve pastors and students. It also says it's here to serve laity, uh, people who want to be enriched uh, by their own study of church history. And here's the contributors. And you see up top here, Stephen Nichols. He was the general editor, president, a professor in apologetics at Reformation Bible College. Uh, Stephen Nichols, I have to tell you, he is one of the very best Bible teachers around. But there are a host of other names on here. If you want to uh, stop your video and take a look at the names, uh, Keith Matheson is a really good, solid evangelical. I'm glad he's involved with the product, uh, project. And, he, and as was Gerald Bray, all three of these top-notch top men of God. Now here is the preface to the English Standard Version. Now I am not here going to review the English Standard Version. It's been around for a while and there are many great Bible study reviews and just general reviews on the English Standard Version. So, uh, But needless to say, if you want to take a look at that and learn about how it came around and what were the roots, everyone, every Bible that you have has it's, it's rooted in some other Bible of the past. And the ESV, it, talks about that here. Any Bible that you buy up front is going to talk to you about the translation processes it used. So I would encourage you to look at that as well. The front section, if this were a larger study Bible, you would still be getting notes on stuff. You're getting notes about the history of the Old Testament and stuff like that. Just even starting at Genesis is a good starting point just so you can get a picture of what each new book looks like. 
because they're always one page introductions. And the first paragraph always talks about general information about the book. And you know, you will see other study Bibles, they have a long explanation. You're not going to get that here. And then after that section above where you get the general information, you usually find somebody of the past who wrote a poem or somebody who wrote some type of quotes. And this one has multiples. You see a quote from down here, John Calvin's here. And there's a, a Thomas, Ol uh, Thomas Oliver's who wrote a song, a hymn, about the God of Abraham. And this is what just about every page you go through in this Bible. It, it really overall is a simple uh, design. Uh, it, there isn't much complicated. You are not going to find inserted notes, inserted maps in any of these sections. Every page in this Bible is pretty much going to look like this. You're going to have a section of biblical text. You're going to have a reference note section, cross-references, and you're also going to have the notes. So let's just talk about those for a minute. And what you see, uh, I will tell you right now, when reference notes are very important. And when you look down here, oftentimes you will find where there's textual variants or some type of added information. Anytime you buy uh, a Bible, make sure it has notes like this in it, those reference notes, because they really are of value. But you can look down at the bottom here. You see notes by John Calvin. Uh, you see Matthew Henry, a famous name, Henry Ainsworth, Horatius Bonar, who was a, uh, Horatius Bonar was a pastor, wrote the biography of Robert Murray Machane. I've seen some names that are common in here. Of course, you see a lot of of John Calvin. Uh, but like I said, you, you have these notes down here and, and like they're often very rich and uh, very beneficial. Now one of the features of this Bible, again you see the standard setup, this is common to every page. Now this is important, you see many of these little add-on notes uh, in here. These are the general notes and I really, this is one of the things that left me wanted more, wanting more in this Bible because I wish they had done many more of these types of notes. But this is Deuteronomy 32-35. Jonathan Edwards' most famous sermon was picked off this text in uh, the book of Deuteronomy, Vengeance of Mine and Recompense, for the time, and it also says, for the time will come when their foot shall slip. For the day of their calamity is at hand and their doom comes swiftly. Jonathan Edwards' most famous sermon was none other than Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And this section here gives information where it happened, what is about, a little bit about what happened. It's kind of a short section there. And these blurbs are always just one paragraph, but it's not always just historical information like this. Sometimes you'll get a hymn, sometimes you get a famous poem, and I'll try to show you a little bit of that uh, as well. Now over here on this side, on Deuteronomy 32:35, you have the note here uh, from sinners in the hands of an angry God. Now, let's look at this note over here. Psalm 19, C.S. Lewis on Psalm 19. The little note for C.S. Lewis says, in reflections on the Psalms, C.S. Lewis wrote, I take Psalm 19 to be the greatest poem in the Psalter and one of the greatest lyrics in the world. The psalmist, Lewis observes, felt the sun piercing and revealing, leaving nothing hidden, nothing secret. So too the law shines into every nook of our lives. The law as the sun is luminous. And this particular psalm is about the sun itself and it's also about God's law or God's holy word. Let's talk about this. This study Bible only comes with one book uh, ribbon marker. And it's a study Bible. My thinking is that a study Bible would have at least two. Personally, I prefer three, but you know, I think that it needs more. Uh, to be justly called a study Bible, I, I felt like they fell short on that one. Now, I will say the Bible is pretty solid. It has a very nice looking spine. I try to get you to see that whole thing on the picture. Uh, it's difficult, but a very nice spine. It is solid. It doesn't overbend. 
Let me just show you a little comparison here with my Christian Standard Study Bible. Watch this. Watch this. This, this is a goat skin study Bible and highly, highly flexible. I mean, overly flexible. But this one is good. I, I do like it. It is solid. It has a good spine, a uh, very good spine to it. And of course, the gold that adorns it on the side uh, is very nice. Now, as far as indexing, there are three editions of this that I have seen, and none of the three, a hardcover and this softcover and the other one, uh, do not have uh, indexing. Well, let's move forward to the New Testament. And you see the book of Matthew going to the New Testament. Same pattern, one page introduction, and you know you can go in the first one, the style's the same. Every page is like this in here. There are no maps, no added information that, other than the blurb I showed you about C.S. Lewis and Jonathan Edwards. Uh, and you'll see more. I mean, those are, the Bible does have many of those. So don't think for a second those are the only ones. Or you'll run across a lot of them. Now, one of the things that I think they missed in this Bible uh, was the conversion of Jonathan Edwards. And I would look, one of the places I looked at the beginning when I got it, and I said, okay, I'm going to go to 1 Timothy 1:17, because this was the verse that converted Jonathan Edwards. Uh, to the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, the significance of Jonathan Edwards' conversion was that he struggled. That was the thing that held him back from believing in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And I thought they missed an opportunity to put that in here. So, like I said, there was just, it's just not complete. Great value. You can see all these notes here. There are over 20,000 of them, of these notes. I don't know how many of these are in here, these types of notes. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Uh, that's, that's a hymn. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. And this tells the history where that hymn came from. Uh, pretty neat feature. I don't need to spend a lot of time on there because the style, the setup, and everything is pretty much the same uh, throughout the text. All right, on the ecumenical creeds, unlike the Reformation Study Bible, you only have three back here, where the Reformation Study Bible has a swath of them. Apostles' Creed, nice, uh, Nicene Creed, the Chalcedonian definition. Those are the only three creeds you got, three of the earliest uh, creeds in church history. Then you have articles and resources. Uh, these articles are also found in the Reformation Study Bible. Many of them are the same. Uh, I don't think every one of them from the Reformation Study Bible is in here, but these are articles that are very well worth reading over various top topics. Bible in the Reformation, the Patristic Era, uh, History of Bible Translations, well, very well worth knowing. So, you know, they do have a richness. The Bible in the Global Church. Those articles provide much added learning, so don't just bypass them. They are very important. Now, this is a form of the Robert Murray Machine Reading Plan, which really takes you through the Old Testament once, uh, the Psalms and the New Testament twice every year. So right here, you have a Bible reading plan with this. I'm glad they added that because that will help you uh, grow in the faith if you utilize one, which if you use your own Bible reading plan that does that, then that's great. Okay, here's the author index. And even on this page, every page has Christian uh, faith heroes of the past throughout it. I look at this page, there's a name, there's Thomas Aquinas is on here, Ambro, Ambrose Aster is Ambrose. Uh, oh, there's Ambrose, Isaac Ambrose in the 1600s, but there's a church father, Ambrose, as well. So Ambrose C. Esther was the one in the 4th century. Um, Athanasius, a great church hero, church father and bishop of Alexandria, vital for his defense of the deity of Christ over against Arian teaching, for which he was exiled five times. Athanasius was a real hero. He's one of my... He's one of my all-time faith heroes. But these are just some of the names of, of many through here. There's about 400 names. William Bridge. Uh, I saw John Calvin there. My favorite, the great Jonathan Edwards. They didn't put the great there. How could you guys leave that out? <laughs> All right, but there's many, many, many. Having read this Bible for about two months now, uh, there's a remarkable richness 
in here. So when you get this Bible, if you get this Bible, uh, you'll see that, you'll feel it as you read it. I do want to give them credit because they put a very good concordance in here. Very useful one. Uh, actually, as I looked and compared it with the one in the Reformation Study Bible, kind of like this one better. So they did a, they did a good job uh, on the concordance in this Bible. And the only color you're going to get in this Bible are the maps. And these maps are virtually the same ones that are in the Reformation Study Bible. You don't find ones that are on church history. Not a whole lot on, on anything that deals with much of the things that we, the notes, the people, the, hero, the Christian faith heroes of the past uh, in this particular Bible. So, but that's pretty much the tour. Let's go ahead and reach some conclusions about their church history study Bible. Let's take a, talk about a few likes about this study Bible uh, that I have. One is I like that it doesn't overbend when I open it. I don't know that I'd actually call this a preaching Bible. I, the reason is the font's only nine point, and actually the print on the notes is even smaller than that, so I would not say that it would be my preferred choice, although have the added value of having uh, both that text of the notes, of course, and the ESV text together makes it easy, convenient for a minister to go down and take a look at that, but they better be wearing these. <laughs> a large problem that I see, I really, really do. I, I think you can sum up the whole thing with this Bible when I say it's kind of incomplete, is calling it a study Bible and having just one marker uh, ribbon marker, I have a problem with that. You know, this is said to be a study Bible. Now I have the Jeremiah 2013 study Bible and it only has one marker, but I can't speak to them today. I haven't opened up one of those boxes. They could have two markers in them now. Uh, my thick Christian standard study Bible has two markers in it. Could easily justify three because that's a very, very thick study Bible. I have it right here. Uh, very thick. Well, this is a Holman Christian standard. It's just the thickness is about the same. And the Holman has two, two markers. So a study Bible and having markers in there, it matters. Uh, and I would think that they would want to put uh, more markers in them. I, I, it left me incomplete on some other things, too. And, you know, it just leaves you wanting more. Uh, you want more information about many of the authors. Now, there are about 400 historical figures that contribute to this. I do want to note too that the range of time that this goes through is from like church fathers up to the 20th century. I personally think that R.C. Sproul uh, has a place in this. R.C. Sproul was, in my mind, the last great theologian we've had. Uh, but I understand he, oh, he passed in the 21st century back in 2014. Uh, but R.C. Sproul, was up there with anybody uh, in this particular volume. I think that we could have, or I think they could have added him in there and, and it had been just fine. Uh, what else do I think? I think that they could have included things uh, like maps in there. It would have been nice to see it. And the reason, and the way I'm saying about the maps is, you know, instead of just uh, using the same maps that you had in the Reformation Study Bible, which really applied uh, more to biblical history itself over the 1500 years and plus the lands where the Bible, you know, where it happened. Uh, I think what you're talking about here, let's say, let's take the First Great Awakening. Jonathan Edwards led the First Great Awakening. So what you do is you put a map in there of the New England area, Enfield, Northampton, places like that where the revival spread. You're talking about a passage that was influenced somewhere around Deuteronomy chapter 32, 35, I think. But don't quote me on the 35. I know it's, it's chapter 32 in Deuteronomy. But you have that. You can show that time. If you're going to do Augustine's conversion, 
Well, where was he converted? Show a map around there in his area of influence. Uh, those are the kinds of things I'm talking about. And I, I think that they missed an opportunity to add certain things in here that would have certainly uh, enhanced this and made it more desirable for people to buy. In, regardless, I mean, the notes are very rich. Don't get me wrong on that. I just think that there were some missed opportunities. You know, instead of two ribbons, they went with one. You know, they went what they had to put this Bible together. I'm glad, not, but I hope in future years uh, that they will update it, update it and put some additions of the sort that I'm talking about. Now, if you look at the picture I'm showing you here, this is actually, you know, when we talk about uniqueness for a Bible, uh, Lifeway put out what's called the Ancient Faith Study Bible I, around 2017. I didn't even know this was out that long. And I wish I had known about it, but the length of what it goes, as far as ancient faith goes, it goes from 2nd sec century to the 5th century. So any, uh, any church father, it's about church fathers and what they wrote about passages of scripture. And I actually bought the Logos version of the notes. And I looked through some of them. I haven't looked through many. I couldn't write a review on it right now, but this added much more, as you can see on your screen. Uh, you look through that, you can see what they did. They have study notes from the, study notes from the early church, of course, you would expect that. You have that in, in the one we're talking about. But the exclusive feature articles, these don't exist in the Church History Study Bible. Profiles of Patristic Fathers. I, you know, even though they have that small section there that talks about each one of the contributors, you know, the, the uh, Church History contributors, figures of the past, uh, there's really, they don't go all that deep at all. And they don't have to go that deep, but like I said, they, they could have picked some of the most influential, you know, St. Augustine was very influential. Jonathan Edwards was very influential. Uh, you can look like at Origen and Jerome, they were very influential. You pick out the most influential of their times and you, you can give a little bit extra on them. Uh, of course, it would have made this Bible bigger, but it would have made it a greater tool. It would have enhanced it and given people something more, people who are like me, they say, hey, I, um, I want to see more, I want to see more. Ah, they have two ribbon markers on here. Uh, you can see that, two ribbon markers, full color maps and more, and their type size, at least for the regular print, is 10 point rather than the nine point of the Church History Study Bible. Uh, the notes uh, where the Church Fathers are is eight point, which is the same as in the Church History Study Bible. So I, I just think that some areas, uh, the Church History Study Bible uh, could have been enhanced to make it a greater tool. I, I don't know how well this Bible will sell. Do I think it has value? Certainly, we'll talk about that shortly. But what this Bible did have, it has over 20,000 notes. And there are a lot of them in here. Some pages are, are really filled with notes uh, from those great historical Christian figures of the past. All right, but when you look at the Church History stu uh, Study Bible, I, I want to say it's nice that it's simple, it's basic. Uh, navigating through this was really not hard because it's not complicated. If we were to go through another look at the Christian Standard Study Bible, there's a lot to talk about there, a lot more uh, to talk about. But still, on the notes, you have over 20,000 notes from 4,000 different Christian figures, important Christian figures of the past, and they come from various types of work in Christian ministry. Uh, some were pastoral, uh, some were missionary, some were uh, theologians like Charles Hodge who taught in seminaries, but they had their place uh, and they cont all contributed greatly. Uh, and that's really where the power of this particular study Bible is. Uh, I look at some of those notes and I, I'm very impressed at times. And I've learned something. It's, it's opened me some new flavors uh, to some of these characters that I have never thought uh, that I would ever be enriched by. Uh, I really have enjoyed about every 
thing I've read from Thomas Aquinas in here. It was, it's been pretty awesome. Uh, let me look at some of the names of those people. Yeah, Gregory the Great. I would never know. I mean, I've heard of Gregory the Great in church history, but I never knew much about him. Uh, but still, notes by Gregory the Great, Ambrose, Origen, and, and uh, Jerome. Uh, like I said, there was some exposure, some thought that you would never think that you'd run across or, or have any interest in. So I'm going to say in some sense, it might expand some of my uh, future uh, writing, reading, uh, things like that. But that's what this Bible's meant to do. Uh, but also you see some of the familiar characters, Charles or Jonathan Edwards, uh, my favorite theologian of all time by far, Charles Hodge. I love reading Charles Hodge, wonderful systematic theology. Uh, his commentaries on Romans and, and the Corinthians books, is, they're just outstanding. But then let's look at who this Bible is for. The introduction said that it's for pastors and students, and, and, and sure it should be because you know, if you want a quotation uh, from a historical church father or something or somebody like that from the past, then it's there for you. It's, it's right there on the page. Uh, you can keep this Bible as a reference book on your shelf. And when a pastor is preparing the sermon and stuff, you know, you get a note, go to the passage, and you're always going to have a quote, just about always. Uh, it's something that you can look to. So highly valuable for pastors. Also for students, uh, students, it can help build their curiosity. It can also help them uh, with papers and things like that because in there it'll always tell where it came from, where the note came from. But it's also great for laity. I'm a lay person right now, even though I'm an ordained minister. But it can be for the curious. It can be for growth. There's, this is a different Bible. I want to tell you right now. It really is. And I have spent time reading this as my daily reader. Now, I read four chapters at least of the Bible every day because I use the Robert Murray Machine Reading Plan. But I'm just telling you that uh, the value of this particular Bible is good uh, because it gives you a different aspect. It's not one of just looking at basic information on study of a passage as your general, uh, your general study Bibles do. This one has a unique focus. It is one that really is given toward of uh, contributors, people who wrote about these books of the past, whether devotionally or whether in a sense historically, but is very rich uh, the way they did it. I would say uh, they need to be people who have been born and bred in the faith and taught in the faith for a while. Well, one of the neat things you find in here too is, as you look through here, regardless of the period of church history, is that you find kind of a common thread that goes through church history of the belief of the faith. It's really uh, awesome. You get through there and you read the thought of so many of these individuals and it's like the church throughout the ages as it should be. It's, it's a communion of saints. I'm grateful to even have one and I, I like it because devotionally it's, uh, it's highly valuable. In the end, is, is it worth buying? Uh, I would say yes. If your end is directed toward uh, what I talked about earlier, pastor, student, laity, who's really kind of been educated and grown for a while in the Christian faith. Uh, none of us in the end are really experts on everything, but our growth pattern in the Christian life should be steady enough that we get to a point uh, where we could really identify and, and value, gain a lot of value uh, from a study Bible like this. And as I said earlier, it, it is unique. It's in its own class. Uh, you could say, well, the other one, the Ancient Faith Study Bible, is the same thing. It's not totally the same thing. Remember, this one, as far as the Christians of the past, the contribution to come from them extend much further. That goes from the first century all the way to the 20th. Remember, as I said, the Ancient Faith Study Bible goes from the second century to the fifth century century. So you're, you're not looking at the same thing here. But as I said earlier, if it's somebody who is new to the faith, this, is, this isn't study Bible you give them. Uh, it isn't. It's, this is one for somebody who's been in the faith a while or people who are uh, like in study positions like students, pastors, or even missionaries. Missionaries can benefit great uh, from this particular Bible as well.
But I will say about this particular study Bible, uh, in the end, I won't say I was disappointed, but I felt very much like what the title of this particular episode is, unique but incomplete. It, it really did, and it still has left me wanting more. Uh, I only bought the notes on my Logos program for the other one, and I see already that there are expansive notes on other things uh, that this particular study Bible uh, did not include. So I hope over time that they can make a revision on it and get some of those things in there. If I had been on an advisory board about that, believe me, I would have brought those things up. But it left me wanting more. Uh, but don't think that means I would say people don't get this. I, I really do treasure, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of growth in here. There's much learning. And like I said, as you explore, you're going to learn that there's some saints of the past out there that you're going to want to explore a little more because they really do contribute greatly uh, to the devotion, uh, to the dedication, and to learning and the spiritual growth in our Christian life. So there is much value. And in the end, I do say, yes, it was worth buying. All right, let's get ready to close out here today. I just wanted to talk about a couple of quick items. Uh, one, if you really enjoy this channel, you've been blessed by it and grown spiritually, uh, ask that you subscribe. I'll tell you what, over the last month, it's been the greatest month of growth that this channel has ever had. I've had around 30 new subscribers and uh, 17,700 minutes uh, that peop people have watched the videos on here. Uh, I, my first video ever broke 3,000, so the channel is definitely on the uptick. Uh, I ask that you come along with me on the journey. It would be great uh, if you'd be there. Um, this channel, in particular, is about Christian spiritual growth. And it is dedicated to and based upon the inerrancy, fallibility, authority of Scripture. It's our only rule of faith and practice. Uh, you don't have to agree with everything I say, but as the Bible teaches it, as I learn it, uh, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to present on this channel. Come along with me for this journey. Uh, very thankful for those who have come along and uh, continue to subscribe. Ask that you come as along as well.